Hi, this is Corey, and here's another Navisworks training video. This video is going to be pretty conversational in nature. I'm going to be talking through much of the process and just illustrating how I use Navisworks as a communication tool. Now, in some of the other videos, I talked about some pretty specific and focused uh, ways that I can use the tool and aspects of Navisworks. In this video, it's going to probably run a little bit longer than most, but it's going to be just a look at my process and um, hopefully you can get some insight into how I use Navisworks as a communication tool and therefore how you can also use Navisworks as a communication tool for you and whatever your needs may be. So I'm going to be going through a lot of different things here. Uh, what's, what's the point of everything? Obviously it's to communicate effectively on your project and meet whatever project goals you have. I'm going to talk about appending different DWGs and file formats, uh, how we import search sets, multi-clash selection, grouping clashes, and making uh, color isolation sets, doing markups, viewpoint settings. Man, there's all kinds of fun stuff here. So let me begin. Hopping over here into Nevisworks Manage 2013. Um, a lot of good things came in 2013. A lot of bugs also came in 2013, and especially in just in terms of display options. Really looking forward to seeing how 2014 functions. So I'm starting off with a blank um, Navisworks Manage template. One thing that you'll notice up here is that I do have my own quick access toolbar. And the quick access toolbar is part of the workspace. So I'm going to save this thing as Corey's Camtasia setup. Okay, you might think, man, that's a little bit overblown, don't you think, to have <laughs> to spend time talking about a quick access toolbar? Well, not necessarily, because I want all of my tools to be very easily accessible to me at all times when I'm working in Navisworks because I'm using it as an on-the-fly tool so I need to be able to use it fast and effectively you know if I'm just doing the clash detection off on my own and I get together in the meeting and basically clicking through views then yeah it's not so much of a big deal but if I'm using it as a live documentation tool it's kind of important to have some of this stuff um, and the unfortunate thing is in order to get this save viewpoint over here on the far left, I have to add it first to my document. Um, so I'm actually going to upload this workspace along with the YouTube video in a box.net link so that you can use this particular workspace and then you can mess with the windows however you want and then save your own workspace. So the first thing I'm going to do is append some of my design NWCs and this is the file structure that works for me. And I'm going to jump into my temporary folder here for my training files in the real world. And this was an actual project that we had um, working. And so I'm, I, I took a few of these files just because sometimes we have to get out of the training world and into the real world, unfortunately. So I'm going to grab the B1 arc and structural and hit open. And notice that I clicked on structure first. And then architecture, but it still puts it in this order. So this is the order that it's going to go into Navisworks. It goes arc and then structure. So if I want to zoom in on this thing, I can click up here in the selection tree, hit page down, and that's going to zoom me right into this location. Nothing too special there. Now I need to add the rest of my MEP files from my trade contractor. So I'm going to hit append, and I separate this into the models for the subcontractor because at Beck we use box.net and box sync to help us with the file management process. So this is still a remnant of one of the old ways of doing things, but I'm going to use this for now. If I look in here, all I'm going to see is one NWC file. And you're like, hey, what the heck? I thought I had plumbing models. Well, we do have plumbing models, but we need to make sure that we're looking for files of all types. So once I do that, I can drag the selection and hit open. So I hit open. Theoretically, this should all be coming in. And some of the models take a little bit longer than others to load. And who knows, maybe this is going to take down my whole uh, camera streaming. Now, one thing to note is that 
when we first started this process, we look over in the save viewpoints, and you'll notice that we have two folders. The interesting thing is that within Navisworks, when you append an NWC that has been exported from Revit, we get some save viewpoints associated with it, some of those 3D views, and the same thing with AutoCAD files. So upon a new appending of a file, you might end up with a whole bunch of viewpoints. So it's important to go over and purge those save viewpoints that you may not want or may not be helpful for you, that just clutter up the model. So at this point, we've got our all of our level one, uh, all of our level one models that are going to help us with our uh, coordination for level one. And you can see here that we've got a few of these things, and dang, so I'm going to hit undo to get me back here. And now I'm going to add a new viewpoint. So up here in my quick access toolbar, when I add a viewpoint, I use my keyboard. When I hit alt, that brings up all the quick commands. And that's really what my quick access toolbar is for. That's why I want my save viewpoint in that far left position. So I can always hit Alt-1, and that's just going to add a new viewpoint. And look at that. Added it in a totally wrong spot. That's not where I wanted that thing. Alt-1. Here. So this is a home view. And now I know I can come up here, click on the bottom, hold Shift, click on the top, hit Delete. Oh my gosh, Navis works. You're killing me. There we go back to my home view. Alright, so at this point I want to bring in some search sets that I've created and you'll see here that this is a fairly consistent naming structure. Uh, we can add additional levels of detail. Sometimes we put project name out in front of it. On this particular project there was a building one and a building two, uh, five levels, a few different companies who were working on this on this process, so, and really it was just three companies. Three companies, four disciplines. So in, to, in order to import our sets, we right click and we say import our search sets. And we find out where that thing is located. Hopefully your company has a location of these things. So here in my training files for the real world, there's TCU Navis Master B12, 2012.B1. And when I do that, I can get this, uh, this whole folder structure and everything else included with it. Here I'm going to pull up my find items to show you a little bit about what these search sets are all about. This typically is a setup that works for me. and But again, in your own process, you can make it whatever you want. Here in our design models, I can grab both my design models here. Arc. So if the item name contains dot arc dot and I try to do um, match case, all caps. Now if this was somehow selecting multiple objects, I would see it over here. Um, right now, whenever I have one single object selected in Navisworks, it shows the properties over here. But if I had multiple objects selected, like this, anytime I have more than one, it's going to show me two objects. So if this showed me two things, or if this gave unexpected results, I would have to go back and figure out how to modify my find items tab. And here's for the structure. Within here I've got lighting fixtures, a lot of things here that we can be looking on. So beyond just design models, I also have by building. So that's item name contains B1. If I had all my models together, I could this is how I'd segregate B1 and B2. This is an important one, is the subcontractors. So I have fire protection. That's anything that contains dot AFP. Um, Don Burden is anything that contains dot DBA. So you'll notice that DBA has both plumbing and mechanical. In this project, they were uh, contracted to do both scopes of work, and that changes changes a little bit of how we do our clash detection here, because when we have the same contractor for multiple scopes of work, we expect them to come to the clash detection meetings with internally coordinated models, right? So I that's going to change how I run my clash detection and I'll show that in the next in the next section. So if I wanted to isolate just my plumbing, I can do that. And right now, you know, it's kind of it's pretty easy because we're just looking at one single level. So you're like, "Corey, why don't you just uh click on these things individually? Isn't that isn't that easier?" Well, 
Yes, it is if we're dealing with one level. But if we have multiple buildings, multiple trades, multiple floors, it gets very, very confusing. So this is a way to keep everything organized. And then we can put you know, components down here. Um, and this is, I had to search by color index to get their insulation because of their CAD standards. I try to let people work in whatever native format they like, whatever they can be effective in, and then I can use my Navisworks tools to pull out the information that I need. As long as they're doing something in a structured way, typically we can work with it in Navisworks and be flexible. I don't want to make anyone you know, impose arbitrary uh, constraints on them for no reason. This one, uh, mechanical, um, <laughs> I said item name contains dot mech, and that's been working. And if you'll notice here, the detailer actually added an additional C in his uh, in his file name early on, first the first week, and he has stuck with that the entire project, and that is just fine in in my mind. That. It's better to be consistently wrong than it is to be erratically right, wrong, changing every week. So I really respected this guy for, for just adhering. It, we, we picked a direction, went with it, and if we ever find an issue, you know, we can go back and remedy that. But for this particular project, that worked just fine. So in the appending phase, I brought in these DWGs and NWCs. Now, that is, it is my best practice. And I will say that some people like to go into AutoCAD and export NWCs that can be then loaded into Navisworks. I don't like to do that because I like to be able to come up here and refresh these files real time. Because in my ideal set settings for my meetings, I like to be able to have all the trade contractors having access to their to their laptops and detailing software so that they can be submitting models live and we can be making updates on the fly to everything so I'm just going to navigate to the the file folder where these objects are training files in the real world models for the subcontractor and the current so when I first started this thing, all I had was four models in this folder. But now we'll see that I have many more folders. And what we can see is that the creation date of each of these NWCs was right here at this time, at 11.43, 11.44. Four. Because when I append a DWG to Navisworks, an NWC gets created automatically. And that can be a little bit confusing in this structure because this was an actual NWC that got appended. You'll see that this is the NWC. These are all DWGs, but they're still NWCs. We say that Navisworks is able to read all file types, and that's somewhat of a misnomer, that what Navisworks is really good at is converting all file types to an NWC that is then read by Navisworks. So in actuality, this NWF is currently reading from a set of NWCs, even though it says that there's a DWG. So th the confusing part, uh, it's just, it is what it is, that in order for me to update this model, I don't update the NWC. I need to update the DWG, because that's what this thing is linked to originally. Confusing, it is what it is. It's just important to understand that, so that you so that you can use it to your advantage. Okay, and another important point is if I am going to be doing um, updates to my model uh, to these DWGs while I have the NWF open, I need to have a global option set for that, and that is in the model performance and onload check the box for close NWC slash NWD files onload. Otherwise what it's going to do is keep those NWC cache files open and when you try to replace the files it's not going to allow you to refresh.
going to say, hey, this is a read read only copy, and there's going to be all sorts of errors that come up. So that's what we say about that. Okay. So these are the sets that I that I typically use, and most of these sets are based on the naming convention that we set up during our coordination kickoff meeting. And because every project's unique, we set up a unique structure for each project. Try to stick to some standard convention, but you know, within reason. Okay. So before I I'm gonna close out this video before I jump into actually working in the Clash Detective, but this is going to set the stage for the real world Clash Detective process that I use for using Navisworks as a communication tool.